ठीक है वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरी वन कोलैबोरेशन With the internal quality assurance cell of Ashutosh College, Kolkata, on the life and works of Professor C R Rao, I feel honoured to welcome our distinguished speaker for today, Professor T J Rao, retired professor, Stat Math Division, Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. The topic of today's webinar will be remembering Professor C R Rao. I would like to express our deep gratitude to the speaker. For taking out his valuable time and joining us today to be a part of this webinar, we feel fortunate to announce that Professor Ena Chatterjee, former head of the Department of Statistics, Azadus College, our very own Isi Madam, has also joined with us in this webinar. She has retired in the month of April last year after giving 41 years of her tireless service to this department. But we are lucky enough to have her blessings and guidance with us till now. A warm welcome to you, ma'am. Finally, I welcome the faculty members from different colleges, my colleagues, and my dear students to this webinar. Just a day before India marked its presence on the moon, it lost one of its brightest mathematical stars, Professor C R Rao, one of India's greatest mathematicians and statisticians, passed away on 22nd of August 2023. About just two weeks before his hundred and third birthday, with a heavy heart, we offer our prayers to his departed soul. Dr. Kalyanpuri Radhakrishna Rao, the former director of Indian Statistical Institute, was in the headlines earlier this year after he was awarded the International Prize in Statistics, which many consider equivalent to the Nobel Prize. The American Statistical Association. described him as a living legend whose work has influenced not just statistics but has had far reaching implications for fields as varied as economics genetics anthropology geology national planning demography biometry and medicine through today's webinar i hope all of us will not only mourn his loss but also inspired by his contributions in a wide range of fields and we will remember him and honor him forever for his invaluable works now i would like to take the opportunity on behalf of our department to give a warm welcome to professor tj rao i feel privileged to welcome you sir professor tj rao our esteemed speaker for today has done his masters in mathematics from andhra university in 1961 Then he received his MSTAT degree in 1963 and PhD degree in 1967 from Indian Statistical Institute, Calcutta. He has joined ISI in July 1967 as a member of research and teaching staff. He was a lecturer at University of Manchester from 1968 to 1971, a senior research scientist at CSIRO Melbourne from 1975 to 1977. He has worked as a visiting associate professor at Loa State University in the time span of 1980 to 1981 and in Virginia Tech from 1981 to 1982. He was also a visiting professor at UC Santa Barbara from 1989 to 1991. He was the co-editor of many prestigious journals namely Sankhya Calcutta Statistical Association Bulletin Aligarh Journal of Statistics a sum statistical review his research interest lies in theory and practice of sample survey over to you sir yeah am i audible 
हेलो यस सर यस सर एम आई हेड प्रोपर ले कैन यू हियर मी यस सर यस सर यस हेलो यस सर वी कैन हियर यू वन सेकेंड Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. <coughs> can you hear me now? You can hear me now. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, I'll go ahead. Just tell me if there is any problem. Yeah. Uh, this is the title which I thought uh, would suit today. So let us remember for some year now. His life and works. Next, actually, I started a small anecdote. Around seven decades ago, there was a passenger traveling to Calcutta by known as the Madras Howrah Mail, and now uh, usually people sitting around they keep talking, and he was asked what he did for a living. Perhaps feeling that an accurate reply would not be understood by them. He seems to have replied, "I work in a school, and I'm the headmaster of the school." Next. In fact, the school referred to is the world famous research and training school, RPS, of the Indian Statistical Institute, and the unassuming passenger, the simple person, was none other than the literary professor T. R. Rao, who was indeed the head of the school for almost for a quarter of a century. He was so simple. He didn't want to tell them all the details. He just said that he works in the school and he is a master. This is indeed true. He works in a research and training school and he is head of that school. Next one. Today we are remembering the legend of Sir C. R. Rao, whose work over seventy five years, which continues to exert a profound influence on science, has been awarded. Prestigious 2023 International Prize in Statistics. This is a claim to be something you call it is a Nobel Prize in Statistics. Therefore, uh, there was uh, jubilation and uh, there were a lot of articles written. Unfortunately, in two days' time, between the eighth and on tenth, would have been his birthday. Would have celebrated his hundred and third. But we all miss him. Well, I am very happy to hear how well known as here now. And doctor out to all his students, including myself, was born on September. As I just now said, he studied in different schools in Andhra Pradesh. He was moving along with his father, who was an inspector of police. Next one. Finally, uh, his father started at the university at the Nishaka Patna, which has got good educational facilities. Then, during his childhood in the elementary school, when he was six years old. His teacher would ask him to recite the multiplication tables, and ask all the students to repeat after him. So he already he already assumed the position of a head of a school or head of a class. And while playing the game Gilli Danda, I think it's called Gilli Dandu in Bengali, he used to correctly guess the distance. So what you have to do is to play with the stick, and then at the end of the uh, his uh, choice, he has to tell how much. The particular thing is travel, and Ziyaro always used to guess correctly, and people used to be surprised. His friends, he was very, very young, and this always shows his prowess in estimation. Theme. Next one. At the age of sixteen, when he came to the college, the magazine had a caption under his photo saying, "He has the unique distinction of knocking out most coveted prizes in every class in Lao." We hope he will continue to maintain the high efficiency of his mental and academic facilities in the years to come. This is when he was in sixteen, and after the year which came, you know that uh, indeed. Next one. Next one. Next slide. Yeah, and indeed, he did so. Their prediction was quite correct. He edited his fourteen books, two of them translated into seven and six languages, four seventy plus such papers, 
there were 51 PhD students of his 43 different volumes of handbook of statistics, 39 honorary doctorates from universities in 19 countries spanning all the six continents. This is something from great uh, in which he accomplished. Next. He did uh, what students say, we are a three year postgraduate degree in mathematics at other university and completed it in 1940. This honors is not like the Calcutta University honors. It used to be a packed course for three years, full of four year subjects. At the end of it, you would get a degree called a BA order. And automatically, after one year, you'll get the MA degree just by sitting at home or doing whatever you like. This guy called me, after some time you get this one. In fact, uh, Professor Bielas Prakash, some of you know, and myself, we all did the same course in the same university, other university. At that time, Sierra was the top scorer, and then he applied for his scholarship at the same university. So, his uh, principal calls him and says that you are late by one day, you can't accept your application. So he rejected the application. <laughs> then poor CRO goes to the vice chancellor, gets his uh, appointment, and requests him to let him join the research scholarship in Andhra University. And the vice chancellor said, I can't do anything, principal already rejected, so I can't accept you as a scholar. Then he was rejected, he rejected also. But at the same time, he was surprised to know after some years, the same university, Andhra University, invited him to give an honorary VSC at the convocation. So, see, we thought sometimes the officious loans will happen and what they will turn later into. Then he decided, because he is free looking at jobs and so on before appearing for what was known as ICS at that time. And then there was an advertisement in the paper saying that there is a job in RB for the mathematician. And then he was uh, supposed to go to Calcutta to attend an interview. He had the interview. They found a young boy from uh, Andhra University and then said that you are underage. You can't do the, the you know, army mathematician, move with the army wherever they go. So he was rejected. So he became unhappy. Next one. Came to the hotel. Next one. And then uh, there he met at the dinner table one person who came from Mumbai, most probably from RBI. We get trained in the Indian Statistical Institute. So when he heard this story, he told him that uh, you did mathematics, and they know a place called Indian Statistical Institute. I came there to get trained by them. And then I will take you tomorrow. He took you to the Presidency College. Mahalana Bishu, Argatavi, is ISI, in a small room in the physics lab. That room consists of a few tables and one or two some kind of a machines and then some maps. And people are working very much. At that time, Mahalada Bish was already doing the short survey in Bengal. Bengal means both Bengal from 37 to 42. So he was busy with that survey. So Sierra was very much influenced by that thing. So he applied for position to join. So he was asked to join as a statistical trainee. He was in first class first in Andhra University, MA. Very soon next year, Mahalada Bay started the MA course in statistics, perhaps the first time in this part of the world. And then CRO appeared on that MA course. He sat through the course. They again topped it in 1943. There were only five students. He was one of the toppers in that class. Uh, Professor Nangi was in his class, in the class of Professor HK Nangi. Next one. <laughs> then, after finishing the MA in 76, he joined as a technical apprentice in ISI. And by that time, R.C. both K.R. Noir, S.N. Roy, they were working with Mahalala B. Some of the subjects. There they were no testers or anything. They were reading papers in daily journals and trying to carry out some research. The CRO joined them and uh, working along with them and trying to contribute to their papers. Mahalala B. was very much intrigued by that. And uh, he got some data from him. Lucknow Anthropologist Society in Mazumdar. He collected huge amount of data on anthropometric measurements. 
and a survey of United Provinces. This is what we now call referred as the Uttar Pradesh Kingdom. So, if, so in the so Mayanagari Khans, we are going to use the concept of Mayanagari D square and find the distance between two populations. Already mastered in multivariate analysis. So he went out to do lots of research. These beautiful papers were produced during that time. Next time. So Nana was impressed, and there was an invitation from Cambridge University to for somebody to analyze this clinical data from North Africa, which they dug it up and then brought to the lab in Cambridge University. And Malala was immediately sent around to Cambridge University. And he went to Cambridge University and started looking at the data and uh, started looking at the measurements. And at the same time, he found that there is a genetics lab in the same university. And R. A. Fisher, who we already knew as the father of uh, modern statistics, he was working in genetics. So we met him and uh, asked him for guidance. So he wouldn't take the Fisher wouldn't take no guidance. He keep reading and so on. And then when C. R. Rao did that. He goes to him one day. Paper and I have written this paper. He said, "This is not good. This is only theory. You have to have some practice, practical examples, and so on." So here we got influenced by that. In fact, he carried out no, just theory won't would do. You will have to also have a practical experience. So I did some practical examination, practical examples, calculations, and so on. Then he agreed for the paper to be published, and eventually that became a very important paper. Biometrics. He got his PhD in 1948 from the University of Cambridge, and later on, by peer review of published works, was awarded the SC degree by the same Cambridge University. Next one. Now started what is superintending statistician, 44 to 48, with good a salary of 25 rupees by the month. We said at the time he worked for 40 years till he retired at the mandate range of 60. And he held important positions. Head of the RTS, as I already told you, director and secretary of ISI. During that time, he has to deal with lots of people. He was the director and secretary. So it was an unsatisfactory period for him. So he decided to move to Delhi campus, which started by then. So, and then later on, he became Jawaharlal Nehru, the third national professor at Delhi. Next one. Throughout his tenure. World-class research facilities are made available at ISI. He arranged long and short-term visits by renowned experts, organizes lecture series, encourages the publication of monographs, and thus this period came to be known as the golden period of ISI. Next one. <clears throat> Since post-retirement scenario in India was not much conducive for continuing research, he moved to USA. And continue his research there with a more rigorous vigor, a regular view, reviewed vigor. First to University of Pittsburgh and then to Penn State University, and then he became the director of Center for Multivariate Analysis, and also professor, a Berkeley professor, and now before his demise, research professor at University of Buffalo till recently. Next one, <clears throat> he was a fellow of Royal Society of Fathers. National Academy of Sciences, Third World Academy, the Queen's Academy, King's College, Cambridge, gave him an exclusive honorary life membership. This membership is given to only eleven persons at any time. Here I was honored in that thing. Next one. As a recipient of the Santosh Mirror Bhutanagar Award, at a time when China and India war was raging on, he donated the entire prize money to the Prime Minister of Yavala Lehru at that time. For his national and defence fund, and he said in the meeting, the country's need is greater than that of an individual scientist in times of war. So Nehru was next one. He was awarded the Bhushan, the second highest civilian award by the government of India. As well, though, next one at the Berlin session of the International Student Union, Nehru was awarded the Bhagwan Nobel Prize in the history of lifetime achievement in statistics. And then he didn't want the excellence in 2010. <laughs> Next one. There are a lot of medals which he collected. I don't want to go through all these things. Wilkes Medal, Wilkes Coffee Medal. 
the, the guys medal in silver as well as gold. The gold medal was not given to Asian for a number of years. The gold medal, quite recently, in 1993. There's the Mahalala B. Sintri medal, Vedna Saha, Ramadha, J.C. Bose, and so on. Poland has a special medal which he was honored. Next one. There's a special honor which we mentioned. He was honored by President Bush as a proffer of better age at the White House and was awarded his highest award, which is called the National Medal of Science in the U.S. for his pioneering contribution to the foundation for statistical theory. The multivariate statistical methodology, applications, and so on and so forth. Next one. Okay. Prime Minister Dr. Pramod Singh at home, the first year of the highest and in the India Science Award, again for the significant contributions to the field of statistical science, which has profound influence in theory and application of statistics. Next one. Sierra, an Indian professor whose work over 75 years ago, continues to accept profound influence on science, has been awarded the 2020 International Prize in Statistics. I already mentioned this in the beginning. This is how the recent announcement on www.stat.com starts. Next one. <laughs> it continues. It is a remarkable 1945 paper published in the Union of Calcutta Mathematical Society. 45 means it was about war time and uh, there were no publications, there was no link with the Western world. And there was therefore, because it is mathematics and statistics, he also chose to publish in, in uh, Bulletin of Calcutta Mathematical Society. This he actually wrote in 1944 and he was not uh, published. Uh, he was aged 25 years old. And uh, he, he demonstrated three fundamental results in this paper. They paved the way for the modern field of statistics and provided statistical tools heavily to the science today. They are called the Kramer Rao Award. Most of you have already learned, or most of the teachers are teaching Rao Blackwellization. And the third result is known as the information geometry now. That is about professional information, raw information, and it included all those in the paper of 1945 itself. Next one. But his outstanding achievements has been honored with the establishment of an institute in the University of Hyderabad, and I named out Sierra Rao Edwards Institute of Mathematics and Computer Science. First of all, they wanted to start an institute and they requested the Osmania University, Mother University in Hyderabad. They gave them a hand, but then unfortunately there is a problem with that in the release problem and all that thing. Then Sierra Rao went to Professor Hasnain of Central University of Hyderabad and described this problem here, the problem and so on. So the first question the, the director asked him was, when can you come? So here I was surprised at his gesture and then he, he was uh, allowed to start his institute and uh, we, uh, first he was given a small room in the guest house. It's called the, that, that, that name is called Sierra Institute. Actually, it got a new building and so on. And there is the big sign which says we are Rao Institute. Within the institute, there is something it's called, called Rao Rao Rao, which describes the, the, the statistical uh, heritage and designed by Rao Stratton, Dr. Tejasri Rao. It has all the people because of his medals and prices and so on and his contributions. This was inaugurated in two large and in 2013. The gallery visitors and students. So if one goes to the university, one can see this gallery in Sierra National. <laughs> in the 60s, we used to have for the third floor of the university. All the faculty, research scholars, we used to mingle. Then we used to discuss the problems. Professor Sierra would ask somebody, What are you doing? What did you prove? Somebody said, Yesterday I wrote a uh, for the paper. So he would ask him to describe it. So, uh, while sitting he, one who discussed mathematics and statistics. J.B. Hartley was there. Some of you might have heard his name go on. So he used to come and share the deans, all of us, and so on. So that was a more fantastic area. A lot of uh, research also was discussed, and so on. So Dr. Ray used to say at that time, if you need a grant, 
from the US. Use the term signal and noise. Then you will get a grant. This was saying uh, your uh, mean and uh, variance and all that kind of things. A little did you know at that time that the CRR organ of the 1945 Wakefield paper, which talks about signal processing, engineering applications, and a host of other areas, you has all these applications. So it's now one of the most important papers cited in the, all these uh, uh, subjects. International. The other reaction was popularized the wrong characterization is abundantly used in so many subjects, sampling theory, dynamic neutral networks, multi Kautler method, cross-validation, non-parametric bookstop, etc., etc. Notions with raw black mark tracker, just a good effort. In fact, some of the statistics you won't even understand the constellation tracker and so on. Of course, we understand notions both in and such, Bushna, we understand, but this filtering and so on is a little bit uh, unknown to some of the statistics we do. It is not part of the application. Next one. One surprising thing in all of us is raw black organization used in games. <clears throat> For example, those who know basketball, uh, the, the, you have to put the ball to a basket. That's called a goal. So the basketball, uh, the NBA and so on, the situation in the US, they rate the people. He is a topper with so many balls and so on. Somebody said that this is not the right way to do that. You have to do the raw equalization. The ball, what is the raw equalization? Field goal percentage estimator, which has this application, which is used in sports. In fact, I think somebody who plays cricket well and knows all that relation, he can also reorder the creating something, say who is the best batsman, and things can be done that way also. There's another interesting concept which is called raw black is WhatsApp. Nowadays, in WhatsApp, we'll get lots of messages and so on. So you can cluster them and you can do uh, lots of things like that. And that's called the raw black one in the WhatsApp. In fact, somebody is interested, I can send you the results of that thing. Next one. I will have a, tell you a little history of raw black equalization. So as I said already, CRR approved this in 1945 in the Indian Journal. <clears throat> Unknown to him, Blackwell, David Blackwell, proved it in the Arabs of Mathematical Statistics in 1947 in the United States. There was a conference in Israel in 1953. Bergson was a lecturer. And it seems CRR was there. Visitor there, he was the audience. And he heard the person referring to black validation for that theorem. Then he was attending after they told him that he proved it in 1945 itself. Then Bergson replied, raw validation is difficult to say, it's untwisting. Whereas he can only say black validation. Raw validation, you have to tongue twisting and so on. So it will be difficult to say, therefore, he called it black validation. But in the later measure, the test he called it raw definition, gave credit to the raw as well. Another statistician in England, Lindsay, he wrote a book review on Trump book publication statistics. He, he was mentioning about black validation, black validation, and so on in that book. And Sierra wrote to him, he was not attending him, after he just read the book review, he wrote to him. He said that, you know, in fact, I didn't take himself. Then Lindsay replied, uh, you did not mention that you did it in the introduction, that that was the result. Then Sierra replied, I did not know that the introduction to the paper is written for the benefit of those who read only the introduction and do not go through the paper. I didn't know that thing. That's why I did book that I have proved this result in the introduction itself. So, research scholars, please be aware if you want to say something important, say it in the introduction itself. So that uh, somebody in don't read it, we won't read the paper, then I will know that part of the paper they will know. That's what. <clears throat> Orthogonal arrays is a concept which is started building up design of experiments and so on. And this is referred to as new mantra of American industries in an article published in the Forbes magazine in 1996. And uh, there was one uh, visitor. To, to India, to ISI, he learned this orthogonal and so on. So he went back 
and uh, he, he used it in Japanese industries as well. Nowadays, cryptocurrencies have important application in cryptology also, or number theory and so on. He did uh, work in sample survey surprisingly. Of course, being in a sample survey myself, I was interested in work in sample surveys. I got a paper as well. There's something called Rose and Arnold's, which Mayor Cox refers to, and he says that uh, Sierra said, if one wants to use the likelihood principle in sample surveys, it pays to throw away part of the observed data. This dear cause termed it as Rouse paradox in sample surveys. He solved the regular fiction problem in econometrics in an old econometric paper. And uh, actually the score test, what he calls it, is what he calls statistics, they call it the econometric should call it the grange in the grand multiplayer test and so on. So they didn't know the worth of uh, all these uh, linear models and so on at that time. So nowadays, uh, they want to, to stress more on these aspects and so on. He was interested in official statistics as well. Mahal Arabi started in 1950, what's known as International Statistical Education Center. He invited all the all the uh, workers, all the employees, of organizations in uh, Africa, Far East, and so on to ISI, and organized a course for them, a 10 month course to teach them statistics. So, CRO was in charge of that. He continued that. He was the, he was the uh, chairman of the committee after Mahalo Rabi's demise in uh, 1973. Not satisfied with the domestic uh, improvement in this thing, the United Nations asked the CRO to have a plan to share the committee for something more. So, he, he, he gave a, a, a plan for what is known as the Statistics, Statistics <coughs> Institute for Asia and Pacific. And this was first started in Tokyo. Now it's in Chiba. What they do is they again invite the, all the officers from various governments from the, the other side. And then uh, they will come and shape a sharp duration, unlike the ISA, of course, which is 10 month duration. At the time in Sydney, when Mahalangi started NSS, CRO from Matthias was also interested in the took part in collection of data, preparing schedules, along with uh, all the stalwarts like uh, Professor D.B. Nahiri, uh, Jataya, uh, J.M. Shainbukta, and then Evan uh, Murthy, and all others. I'm surprised to see that he has got a lot of influence in financial statistics. He edited several volumes in financial statistics too, and one interested in the, the papers in financial statistics as well. So, so it's like a polymath. We do so many subjects. But the applications are there in all the subjects that we uh, have come across. Next one. <clears throat> Course development, teaching, training, statistics, and so on. ISI was committed to start degree courses in 1959 by an act of parliament, and in 60 they started Bachelor of Statistics, Master of Statistics, and PhD courses. Uh, I am in the second batch, 5163 of MSNAC, and the, the courses for that with the device by CR now and so on. It was not just interested in uh, the course, all the, what is to be taught and so on. He also organized what is in practice. So he used to send us to Unity. Which has got the outer part of ISA there. We, we used to spend some time, go 10 years there to go down and come socioeconomic data, go through the muddy fields and collect crop cutting experiments and so on. So, all those things that were uh, good for the, for the, for the students. And just sitting at the table and trying to learn statistics is not enough to do this philosophy. And when teaching, he always thought that uh, it's important to. Do by example. I, I'll just quickly tell you one or two examples. The first day of our, uh, of our uh, ISI, that was 10th August 1963, uh, 1963, 10th August, 1961, 10th August, 61 63 match. Uh, second day, we, first day we all arrived in the hospital, second day we were in the classroom. And Professor Kayar Shah gave us uh, some work, afternoon practical class. After half an hour, he was still to compute and then he left. Three points in the room where we were has two entrances. So somebody entered to the back entrance, came to the front, stood before all of us, 
and pick Rona first and said, what's your name? He mentioned his name. Some vacant up and Then he asked another person, what is your name? He said, Prabhakar Babu. Then he got annoyed. He said, who made you Babu? Then uh, Prabhakar Babu was surprised. He said, my parents. Then Sierra realized that he is from other position. It's a common name. People just put Babu. Like Raja Babu. Or youth, uh, uh, Jogesh Babu and so on. So, he was so, so jovial and so on. He took it nicely. Then he called up on the board at the board and he will ask us, what are you doing? So how did you start in the lecture? What did the teacher tell you? At that time, you should not why expectation. He died at that time. There was no PX there. And then Singh was going to the areas. Then he would continue the lecture. But only he had to go to the board and start telling. He will make the students write everything. And then he, he will make all the students understand. He will not take part in the teaching and learn it uh, through that. It's, it's a very wonderful experience and then nobody beat that one. Next one. <clears throat> Two ideas which are great uh, with this brainchild. Statistics Olympiad. One day, as I said, this was started in a small room in 2009 in the Sierra Institute in uh, University of Hyderabad. He invited me in 2009 and uh, he asked me to, he okay, got made an arrangement with the statistics department to make me teach a course there so that I can get the guest house accommodation. And daily afternoon, I used to sit with him and discuss various things about the, how to organize this year of the in the new building and such things. So he asked me one day, let me have a statistics Olympiad for example, like mathematics Olympiad and so on. So I told him that uh, it's only possible at the BSc level. Just think about it. It's not for the BSc people. I would like to have students at the school level 9, 10, 11, 12 to get interested in statistics so we can pick up some good students and train them. So then we thought and prepared a question paper and then he liked it. So he said, go ahead. And actually not just to help the usual thing Olympia type questions. It's like uh, a question which is, I will give you a simple example. Uh, example for the class 9 student, odd numbers from uh, uh, 1 to 100, even numbers from 1 to 100, which mean is larger. So some, some of the people who are sitting in the test, they add up 1 plus 3 plus uh, 5 plus and so on, get the answer. And then they get uh, 2 plus 4 plus so on, geometric get the answer. And then they finally say one is larger than the other by one. The brilliant student would say that each, each number is uh, larger than the other number by one. Therefore, the mean also is larger than uh, by one. So they would pick up him and give him a price. So that is one of the things which started in 2009. It's now continuing, I suppose, still, because I lost touch at the while. Then the other idea of the Statistics Museum at the University of Hyderabad is the foundation stone laid down by Dr. Kalam, the president at that time. And it will be interesting if somebody, University of Hyderabad and, uh, and the Sierra uh, looks at, at that one and decides to paint a to try to start that will be possible with some grants from the government. That's one. We remember him as a statistician who paved the way for the modern field of statistics. We remember him as a prophet of better age. We remember him as a champion of pioneering what was statistical systems of developing countries. We remember him as a scientist. scientist. All the scientists used to look forward for his tests and his, uh, his uh, results and so on. And so on and so forth. Next one. Today, let us remember Professor C.R. Rao as a legend who, I quote, left us an example of life filled with love, dedication and duty, and of life dedicated to action with knowledge and activity with achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, sir, for your enlightening lecture. Now, I would like to request my colleague, Dr. Shishendu Mukherjee, 
the convener of this webinar, who delivered the vote of thanks and formally conclude today's webinar. Over to you, sir. Um, good afternoon, everyone. On the behalf of the Department of Statistics, Ashutosh College, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all those who contributed in making the webinar a success. I would like to extend special thanks to our respected principal, Dr. Manush Kobi, for providing us all kind of support and guidance. My heartfelt thanks with lots of gratitude and respect for our eminent speaker, Professor T.J. Rao, for not only sparing his valuable time, but also enlightening us with his commendable talk. I would, I would like to thank Professor Vikash Kumar Sinha for his valuable guidance and encouragement. Without Professor Sinha, it would not have been possible to organize this webinar. I would like to thank our seminar workshop organizing committee, especially Dr. Shayani Mukhopadhyay and Dr. Shuhadeep Gupta, and the members of the IT cells, especially, Dr., uh, especially Shomnath, uh, for his immense help in organizing this webinar. In addition, I thank my colleagues and other departmental staffs for extending their hands of cooperation to make the webinar a success. I would like to thank Professor Ena Chatterjee, former head of our department, for sparing her valuable time with us. Okay. Last but not the least, I would like to thank our students and all the participants of the webinar for their participation and attention. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir, for joining. Yes, we can leave now. So we can leave now. Thank you. Remark. Come to the leap, come to the.